When you when you come here, what do you normally get? Mm, sometimes I spend high as seventy dollars. <laughs> yeah. And what's your favorite? I spend about forty dollars a day. Jeez. I got four fish sandwich and four pork chop sandwich. I got a dinner. Sometimes we come here and get like twelve dinners. Yeah, that's love. If it's it good food, they don't need to go away. Just stick with it. <laughs>
business, uh, you know, has she run a business before or anything like that? Was she a self-taught cook? Yes. Yeah. And for the two of you, how old were you when you first started cooking? Do you remember? <laughs> She had us cook very early, I think it was like 10. Mm -hmm. In the teen years, yes. Do you remember the first thing that you cooked? Oh, yeah. I don't get yours. <laughs> <laughs> such a prestigious award, but, you know, we wasn't looking for that. They actually had called, uh, a lady called, and she was telling us that we were nominated for the James Bird Award. And I told her, yeah, that's really nice. At the time, I didn't really know what the James Bird Award was. Mm -hmm. And um, she said, you ought to be more happier than that because it's like the Grammys or the Oscars. I said, really? So I thought it was like a, somebody playing a prank call. <laughs> so when she hung up, she called to the post courier and talked to oh, Hannah. Yeah. And Hannah came up here and she literally said, you know what's going on? <laughs> yeah. And she so explained it to us, you know, and so from there on it was like, wow, I can't believe it. Uh, real shock. So we went to Chicago to get the award. We all did. Everybody did. Yeah. We all did. The shrimp and gravy. One of my favorite soul food spots is a place in Oxon Hill, Maryland called Levi's Barbecue. Uh, Levi's is known for their North Carolina style chopped barbecue. Oh, delicious. And their hush puppies is off the chain. Another spot in Maryland is in Suitland, Maryland, and it's called Kenny Joe's Soul Food Restaurant. A mouthful of Joe's mac and cheese. Oh, can't say enough. And her living onions, hey, off the chain. Uh, and we'll take it down south, this place called Mama's Kitchen in Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, the name says it all, Mama's Kitchen. Hey, what more can you ask for? was actually the name uh, by the name of Zoes. Uh, it was in the place of the old Ladson house on uh, that, that's President Street. Right. Um, down from Burke High School. Okay. It was focused more so around like a bar and grill type. Uh, there was more uh, alcohol involved, dancing, more of a, a night, night scene. Okay, so you mentioned the Latin house, so that's that's pretty significant in Charleston. I was just talking to somebody about that. So what what was the Latin house? The uh, Latin house was an older restaurant. Um, I remember uh, going uh, be mid evening to get you a wing and fry meal or a fish and fries right. um, from Miss Latin. That's yes. that, that, that was the school. significance of it. Old and school. you would go get your chicken wing and you would keep your, that leg quarter and keep it going. That's exactly. what it was all about. A so, chicken box. Word. So who's Dave? Dave. Uh, Dave DeGro. Um, he and my mother met, I would say, had to be in the mid-80s. I'd say maybe around 1986, 1985. Um, Dave actually was a chef downtown. My mother was actually a seamstress and worked uh, as a 
airplane manufacturer at Lockheed. Uh, it was a dream of hers to open a restaurant. They decided to leave downtown, the restaurant scene downtown, do it for himself, and that's when they decided to open up Zoe's, like I said, in 1987. Okay. So how did you get involved? Um, well, believe it or not, I did not get involved until I returned back to Charleston in 1996, in the, in the 96, beginning of 97. Uh, at that time, I was still in Atlanta working at a restaurant, um, sports bar type establishment. Uh, just made a decision to come home uh, to help my parents out. And so you say, after the Olympics in 96, I returned to Charleston and I've been helping out pretty much ever since. Originally, Dave was always a late night type establishment. Even when it was the bar and grill uh, setting, we still ran from till about five, six in the morning. Uh, when he shifted to food, uh, it stayed the same. Uh, what Dave thought was, well, if you remember, Charleston was wide open at that time. Um, you had the gentleman who worked at the waterfront, you had the hospitals, you had the uh, medical university, uh, the College of Charleston workers. So there was a lot of activity outside of just nightlife. And so uh, I provided food for those who were at work also, not just hanging out. Um, he just saw it as a, Dave saw it as a niche, you know, uh, that could be approached and tackled. Uh, the only reason we probably don't meet, well, I can say for a fact, the only reason we don't stay open as late now is simply because of where this building is located in terms of zoning. Uh, it's zoned residential, commercial, therefore, you can only operate at a certain amount, a certain time, hours. Uh, but given that, we would still be going till four or five in the morning. Yeah, I can remember, I always tell this story, as we talk about Dave's a lot, it's been a running joke, so I had a friend come in from Jacksonville, and she got here late, brought uh, a sister and a friend with her, we went to the club, and then they wanted to eat, so we came down to town to Dave's, and if you know, if it's something you used to, you don't think about it, so mm -hmm. they're not used to it, so it was like three in the morning, and uh, we come in the spot, and it was very diverse. <laughs> it was a very diverse crowd, and I'm just sitting like, you know, it's normal. And I'm watching you because you're always like so intense. And I was like, I can't even say what's up. I'm just keeping moving because he, cause he's, he's in his groove right now. And they were very impressed, and it was just like being in a twilight zone because it was, it was young, it was old, um, there was black, there was white, and it was just very diverse. And it's like three in the morning, and people are getting real food. So that was that was. It's dope. funny that you said that. Uh, I would say this. My mother hates when I say this, but yeah, uh, at any given time, it can be judges to junkies all in the same building. Exactly. And, and we have, and everyone is getting along. There's no problems. It's, you know, there's common conversations and, and things of the such. You know, the one thing I've always, and Dave, we've always demanded upon entrance is respect. Um, whoever comes through that door, you give respect, you get respect. And that's just the bottom line. I laugh to this day, thinking about that people actually paid me for my mother's food. This is the food that I grew up with. And I can think about the times when I would dodge trying to eat it. Now look at the fact that someone is actually paying, paying her for it. That's probably the greatest compliment ever. Um, I'm almost surprised. The shrimp and grief. There was a, a soul food restaurant in Sumter called Solomon's Kitchen. And it was a family run um, restaurant. They were in existence well over 40 plus years. Um, I had the opportunity to work with, you know, in the restaurants as, you know, um, a server. And, you know, I just watched how people really poured, you know, the love into preparing meal, you know, preparing food for people. Um, and you know, like with this particular seven with Bertha's Kitchen, it's like you can still see it. You know, you know the genuine love that they have when they're in there. You know, it could be busy, it could be hectic, 
but at the same time, they enjoy feeding people. Mm -hmm. I'm Sophia Grant. And we're the co-owners here at Hannibal's Kitchen. 16 Blake Street. Charleston, South Carolina. 2943. That was my turn. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we good. Where did the name Hannibal's come from? The name Hannibal's came from my grandfather. What was the first thing that you remember cooking? As a child or as a teenager? Just in general. Okay. Um, I remember cooking eggs. Me too. <laughs> now, as it relates to Hannibal's, I mean, like we grew up in Hannibal, so um, I guess me, I grew up in Hannibal, so I was cleaning like the shrimps and the fish and washing the dishes. What is your favorite thing to cook? My favorite thing to cook is. Um, collard greens with smoked, with smoked turkey. Whether you're here or at home, what is the one thing that everybody always wants you to cook? Your, what you're known for doing? It can be the cornbread. Cornbread, cornbread and the red rice. Do you have professional training or is it all just self-taught or watching and learning? Everything is hands-on. Um, no professional training. Um, just mother, just from the mother and um, from the previous cook we had, just off the muscle. Um, when your grandfather was opening the restaurant, do you think that he imagined that it would be a mainstay of Charleston, that it would be a legendary restaurant in Charleston? Or was he Initially, just I don't think so. Um, initially, I believe it just, it's probably just trying it out. Um, and then being a, and then he, my grandfather used to work um, at the Long Sherman Hall. Um, as a matter of fact, it was my granddaddy and um, my uncle Jesse. Um, so it, it was a lot of family base in there. So you know, granddaddy. So he has his his daughters. You know what I'm saying? His sons there. So it was a family affair. So it was the granddaddy and all the families. Um, you have some few non-family members, like um, I can recall, like Miss Mary. So it's, it's it's a whole bunch of them that um, that started the business. So it's like a family business. So Granddaddy was like the high um, that really like ran ran the business. What had you come to Hannibal's? The food, the service, the fact that this black people stuff, black people place. And I know that they have done a lot to help the community. Okay. And where'd you come? What do you normally get? Well, what do you got today? What you got today? Focus soup. No, this is a lot and fish, pigtail. No place else give you the pigtail. <laughs> but this is what I get all the time. When I go to Bertha, I get fried chicken. What else I get at Bertha? Whatever's on the menu. Red rice and cornbread. <laughs> Hannibal's is, um, just like I said, it's third generation, so it's continually growing. Um, like my dad said, um, it's going to be the, you know, ex every generation takes it to a next level. So now me and my sister have it, so we're, we're looking to really like taking it to, and we are working to taking it to the next level. Um, I, yeah, I guess, I guess we'll leave that to the, um, to the future and see what happens. <laughs> But yeah, it is more to come in the evolution of Hannibal's Kitchen. So what is this? Okay, so 
what I did is I got a little uh, sampling from all of the restaurants. Actually, I didn't get anything from Bertha's because traffic was ridiculous and they closed at 6. So I, I didn't have time to get over there. But I did make it to Hannibal's and I made it to Dave's. And I just got a sampling of what they offer. So you're not soul food savvy. We're going to wake <laughs> you up. We're going we're gonna to bring you to the light. Uh, so we, we have uh, crab and shrimp rice from Hannibal's. Uh, we have a seafood platter actually from Dave's and then I got a side of okra, it's okra soup which is my favorite and uh, we got some macaroni and cheese so we're going we're going we're going to indulge <laughs> dig in mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly mm -hmm. well my favorite seafood oh, excuse me. my favorite soul food restaurant uh, was a soul food restaurant back in the day was Dots off of uh, Sproul Avenue um, and um, my favorite meal from there was uh, a stew chicken, mm. stew chicken and rice. I remember that. You actually you put me on to that. Yeah, <laughs> and I would. Uh, that, that was like a daily thing when I would take a break from cutting hair. Uh, it was that. Also, it was the okra, okra soup. I get my okra soup over my rice. You get cornbread and. Uh, I think it was a turkey wing or something like that. Turkey wing? Yeah, turkey wing. Dots had the good lemonade. Oh my god. <laughs> That's crap. Yeah. You know, you know, no uh no offense Chinese people, but Dots had you beat. I'm sorry. You get Chinese lemonade? Chinese people got good lemonade. I never had no Chinese lemonade. Oh, like yeah. ever. Chinese. I ain't never had like Chinese lemonade. Okay, top Iced tea, yeah. Top three Chinese people um, Chick fil A and Dots. Wow. Dots is number one. I'm sorry. Sorry, Chick fil A. Sorry, Chinese people. Hello, my name is J.A. Moore with Lily Ali and also Homegrown Hospitality and I'm a hospitalitarian. Uh, what I'm doing with food that is different is I'm really focusing on soulful food and not just uh, the food itself but the experience that you have with food. Um, one of the things that we're working on is uh, a forum uh, dealing with African Americans here in the Charleston area. Uh, the history of African Americans in the food and beverage in industry and also the challenges that we're currently facing and also the triumphs. There's a lot of uh, incredible people doing incredible things here in Charleston and we want to highlight that. Soulful food is taking it back to your grandmother's house. That love, that that comfort, that hospitality that you always got at your grandmother's house. That pecan pie that was resting on the uh, counter or that fried chicken that you can hear, hear the grease popping so you know it was going to be good. So it's taking that feeling, that smell, that touch, that love that your grandmother gives you all the time and elevating it. So Soulful Food Ele Elevate is one of the things that we focus, it, focus on. We want to make it a little more healthier. We want to uh, elevate the products that we're using. We're using organic products. We're uh, locally sourcing a lot of products. So that's kind of what we, we're doing as far as elevating the soul food, soul food, food elevated. So. But I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be pretty dope. And after speaking with everyone, you know, just the preliminary, giving them the, the heads up of what we want to do and just their experience, I think it's 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 about time for something like this. And I think it's something that we should do on an annual basis. So that's definitely going to be good. And what we're going to call it, we'll call it the Soul Food Kitchen Convention. And uh, and then we're going to eat some soul food. Um, I love that. The fish? Yeah. Give me the fish. In the shrimp and gravy, you don't need much. You don't need much on the shrimp and gravy, you know. Look on up with a little onion, salt, and pepper. And you know what you're doing with some good old uh, uh, low country shrimp. That nice brown shrimp. Man, I smell that woman. You can smell them a half a mile away. Everybody smell them, go run to your house, you know. What? What's this right here? And man, now the onion will start making a little smell. We get the onion smelling. 
head our onion. Oh man, they're getting ready. And I can tell you what now, we can add a little seasoning to them because everything got to cook together. All right, I'm gonna start off with a little bit of, a, a, a little bit of garlic, just a punch of garlic. While it's cooking, you got the 